CI317. All right, so we are halfway through the course. We, um, you probably received your emails to begin enrollment for spring 2019. I cannot believe it. We're halfway through November. Thanksgiving is next week. This is just absolutely crazy. I wanted to walk through, there wasn't a video for this module because there's not a lot of um, PowerPoint instruction that I wanted you to, to walk through. But I did kind of want to go through some expectations of the module. That way, if you had any questions, hopefully this would help answer those. Um, as always, feel free to send me questions. And I'm hoping to get all of module two graded by the end of this week. So I've started grading that. And you might notice that your grade might show that you have an 8%, a 2%, or a 10%. And what that means is not that you truly have a 10% unless you haven't turned things in, then that might be accurate. But the way that the grades are set up is once um, I start grading an assignment and one student gets a grade, it automatically shows the rest of the students as having a zero for that assignment. So until I'm done grading, don't worry about it. It's most likely just because I haven't gotten to your grade yet. But I have received a couple of emails today and I don't, I don't want you guys panicking going into a busy Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna share my screen and kind of talk through um, what module three is all about. So here we are. Let's see, so when you look at, maybe, I don't know why this isn't up again. Okay, so when you look at module three, you're gonna open up and you're gonna see all these online readings. And why is it moving over? Guys, this is crazy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop share for just a quick second. Okay, I paused it, so hopefully this is gonna work now. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you. So when you log on to your Blackboard, there we go, and you get into your module three, then you are gonna see a few different things. As normal, you will see our online readings, you will see our um, two different assignments for this week, and then for the evidence of learning, and then your application task. So what is it that we're gonna be going through today? These next two weeks are gonna be about Common Core and State Assessments. So you have been thinking about those the whole time you have been learning through um, your field experience, your internship classes, talking with your TAP success coach. So I wanna give you some resources for that as well to kind of put in your back pocket. One really cool summary writing um, strategy that I found and have used is called the GIST. And so I wanna kind of go through that. Writing to learn versus learning to write, and then the six plus one traits. Every district does the six plus one traits a little bit differently. So I just wanted to do some exploration as far as the six plus one traits. So. As you click into these different resources, notice that there is a um, Pinterest um, activity on here, not an activity, but a resource for Pinterest. And I absolutely love using Pinterest. Sorry, my puppy dog is wanting to squeak on her really, really annoying toy. <laughs> so if you hear that, I'm sorry. Um, so I put that on there because there's a lot of great printables that you can use in your classroom. So you don't always feel like you have to be redesigning the wheel. Um, then your evidence learning one will take you straight to the core standards, um, common core. Your evidence learning two will take you to the low stakes writing assignment that you're going to do. And then the application task is there for you for your six plus one traits. So what you can do for these assignments is copy and paste it into a Word document and upload it. You do not have to recreate the graphic organizer. So your evidence of learning assignment one is I want you to go to this website right here, the Common Core, Bellaboo. No, 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 sorry. Oh, I don't know if you could hear that or not, but it was driving me bonkers. Um, okay, oh, that's so stinky. Um, so you, I am so sorry, a little scatterbrained. I hope you guys can understand and maybe your brains are acting just like mine. Um, so you'll go to this website about Common Core State Standards. You will look at the um, Frequently Asked Questions tab, which is actually exactly what will pull up when you go to this link. Then there are nine boxes, and I want you to choose out of all those frequently asked questions, nine kind of aha moments or things that stuck out to you as key. 
and you're gonna just summarize those or bullet point, whatever you think is gonna help you. And I really want you to think through, this is where I've been struggling on my lesson plans or I think I might struggle and use those as some of your key points. Thinking through maybe as I'm looking through that frequently asked questions, what is it that's really going to help me as I'm looking at teaching math, as I'm teaching English language arts? So I want you to do some exploration and that might take you beyond that frequently asked questions page, which is awesome. I want you to think about a lot of what we give you as instructors as kind of a springboard for you to go and research and find some, some great articles or some other resources to help you out as well. Um, okay, so going back to my screen here. Um, the gist below this table explains what this summary writing strategy is all about. The GIST stands for Generating Interactions Between Schemata and Text. So I'm thinking about what is the big idea? I'm, I'm doing a recording, just a minute. Um, the big idea, it was a snow day today, so yay. How I can share this strategy with my students is below. So I love this because it gives you kind of a breakdown of how I would introduce it and the purpose for my students. And then it gives you lines. Because in this specific summary writing, you get 20 words or less to tell me what this was about. So that is what's gonna go right here in the box that says gist. In 20 words or less, what was the gist? What was the main idea? What were the, the absolute most important things? If you were to, to, to um, dwindle? Dwindle it down. Dwindle it down to the most important 20 words. That's what's gonna go there. So the only thing you need to copy and paste for this one are these nine boxes. That's what you get to do there. The um, evidence of learning assignment two is talking about writing to learn. A lot of times we get confused between writing to learn and learning to write. So in writing to learn, we're thinking about opportunities where our students are really having the opportunity to think through their thinking. We talked about that metacognition. We talked about constructivism last module. And I want you to think about when I'm writing to learn, it's not about misspelled words. It's not about proper punctuation, although important, that is not the focus of writing to learn. That would be process writing and learning to write, which is what we'll get to in the six traits. But for writing to learn, I want you to look at the specific, um, the specific websites, and you are going to get the opportunity to look at the five different strategies that they bring up on this website right here. So you click on this Edtopia, and you're gonna complete this chart. So what you need to copy and paste into a Word document is just this box. And then you're gonna look at, for example, in strategy number one, grade low st stakes writing simply. You're gonna think about what does this strategy mean in the elementary classroom? What are the benefits of learning about low stakes writing? And how does this strategy help my different students? How does it help my strivers? Those students, just a minute please. How does that help um, my students who are almost there but need a little bit extra help? My thrivers, those who understand it, they get it, they got it, they're good, and they need a little bit of push. So when looking at low stakes writing, how is this going to be beneficial to my thrivers? And then finally, how is this going to be helpful or beneficial to my um, ESOL students? And how are they going to be successful? So I'm gonna look at all five of those strategies. And after reading through that at this article, I'm going to put it in there. Now you can do bullets, you can do a narrative, um, whatever you want and however you learn best. And then I come to my application task. And this is where you're gonna do a web research study over the six plus one traits. And then, please don't do that, okay? Um, so again, we have some Cornell notes, some, some structured guided learning notes, which I use as a strategy in my classroom to help students in guided note taking. So often when we ask our students to take notes, some of them have no clues, but this is a strategy that we can start to teach our students early on that they'll be able to use throughout middle, high school, and college. So I'm intentional in providing you with guided notes. 
So I want you to go to this website and you are going to complete the following just like you did for module two. And the reason that this is your application task, it's worth 50 points because you have two evidence of learning assignments. But I really want you to think through how does this work in my class? How could this work in my district? What are the implications for future teaching? And there's a lot of things that I want you to look at, which is why um, you are um, getting some more points for this. But take a look again at the summary. I wanna know your biggest takeaway in one or two paragraphs. You guys are doing a pretty fantastic job of being very thorough in your responses. And I want this one to be another one where you just explore how this can look in my classroom. So not necessarily just summarizing what you've learned, but your takeaways. And what I mean by a takeaway is how is this going to, um, how can I utilize this and be intentional with using the six plus one traits in my future classroom? Maybe it's next semester. Um, maybe this encourages you to have conversations with some of your colleagues. So hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of some background as to why I chose those assignments. You guys are amazing. I've really enjoyed looking through your strategy presentations on the discussion board. Um, it is awesome how much you guys praise one another and encourage one another. So if you have any other questions about module three, definitely let me know, but I hope you guys have a good day. Talk soon.